so we are live on facebook hello everyone who's watching on facebook hello everyone i'm going to go on my phone and see yes i'm broadcasting also right now so other yeah, people can well, also start yes. coming in yes Yes, I can see we are live. Hi, Sonia. Hey, Mangni Babla also say hello. Hello, and hello everyone who's joined in over here. Please, why don't you write and share? Uh, you know who you are, where you're from, what you do, what is so interesting hello. about this topic. And hello everyone who's joined in over here. Please, why don't you write and share? Uh, who you are, where you're from, what you do. Even Dinu is there. Hi, Dinu. Hi, nice Dinu. to see you back again. Yes, Sonia, we love you too. <laughs> Hi, Harsha. Hi, Av Avani, is it? Avani Kothari. Avani. Hi. Avani, it is okay. Hi, Swati. Sanita. Swati. So wonderful to have all of you here. So tell us about yourselves. Are your teachers? Are your parents? Are your principals? Thank you, Avni Kothari, for telling most of them. Thank you. Hi, Shruti. So Shruti, we are also excited about uh, assessing little ones in the online format. Everyone is excited about this. Hi, Tasneem. And hi, Gitanjali. So Deepa, there are everybody over here is so excited. I can see by all the messages I that they all that want to know something about today's topic. Yeah, and I can see that too. And uh, you know, I hope they get a lot to take back today. I hope that happens in the session. I'm sure I'm they will. Absolutely Deepa. sure they will. And I love it because, you know, you have people from Ajmer, I have Sikandrabad, Pune, and last year we had someone from Dubai and uh, Jakarta. So. Bharti is also there. Hi, Bharti. Nice to see you here again. She's on Facebook. Nice. Okay. So I guess everybody is here and I think we should start. Yes. Yes. So welcome everyone to the ABCD show. And I'm just going to share our introduction before. I'm Amrita Rajpal. I've been teaching for 22 years, but I've been learning my whole life. And that's why I have a company called Edu Learn Grow. I'm a sports nutritionist. I'm an avid traveler and I'm an active Rotarian. I'm also the territory head for the Early Childhood Association, Mumbai. I'm founder Edu Learn Grow and co-founder the ABCD show. Hi. I'm Bela Kotwani, also known as Big B. Big for the size of my heart and B for Bela. 
a fun-loving person with a great sense of humor and a passionate pickleball player. National Core Committee member of Early Childhood Association, founder and principal of Cosmic Kids International, co-founder Puppet Maestros, and co-founder The ABCD Show. The ABCD Show is a show where everything concerned with children is addressed. We're going to get in eminent experts whose opinions matter. We're going to introduce you to new products. We're going to have theories unfold into practice. We'll discuss mental health and wellness. We'll look at best practices. We'll give you parenting tips and we'll explore tools and strategies to help you teach so, effectively. If you are a preschool coordinator, parent, teacher, or anyone who has anything to do with children, this show is for you. So don't forget to like our page to know more about our upcoming events. So hello everyone again, and welcome to the ABCD show. And today our topic is about online and offline assessments. And we have Deepa Bhushan here to give us her expert take on both. So this really gets me, gives me great pleasure to introduce Deepa. And for the ones who don't know Deepa, so Deepa is a passionate educator. She has more than 25 years of experience and expertise handling the 360 domain of education. So that would include management of schools, curriculum design, implementation, coaching and mentoring and school leadership, teacher and leadership professional development, and a lot more. Deepa is also the recipient of the National Award for Excellence from Kanchi Peet Shankaracharya Ji for outstanding work in the field of education. Wow, Deepa, that's wow. wonderful. She's also been awarded the Visionary Leader of the Year at the Future Leaders Summit and the Best Director of the Year at the International School Awards Dubai. She's also written books wow. and teacher manuals on financial literacy, global literacy, digital literacy for young children. She's essayed multiple roles in her journey. And that of being a teacher, a curriculum designer, the head of primary curriculum, head of uh, high school curriculum. And her current assignment is now director of schools for the CP Goenka group. So Deepa, I'm also going to share a little bit about what I know about you. So I know Deepa since over 12 years now, we worked as colleagues in the same organization. And what I want to say is what I remember about Deepa. See, we worked a long time back, but what I remember about Deepa is she's a perfectionist. She's informed, she's logical, she's clear with her thoughts. And that's why she's on the ABCD show. <laughs> so Deepa, I think everybody over here actually wants to hear you, not because of all those academic uh, achievements you have, but because we are expecting something which is practical and logical and clear. And you're the best person to guide us all on this. I totally agree with Amrita. Welcome Deepa to the ABCD show. Lovely to have you here. Thank you, Amrita and Bela. Really nice to be here and I'm looking forward to the session. And sure. a very, very good evening to all the uh, participants. I hope uh, you have a lot to take back after this webinar and practice uh, in your schools. So uh, I'll just start off with a little bit on assessments first. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. assessments is something that puts a lot of fear into everybody. Everybody is worried that, you know, when assessments happen, uh, why are they happening? And do we really need to give them? I think even today, if I have to give an examination, I'm stressed out. I think that's something that happens for everyone. But where preschoolers are concerned, uh, you know, they have no clue. It doesn't even matter. That's the mm -hmm. best thing about assessment for them, that they don't know what it means. They don't care what it means. 
unless we as educators or parents get them to know more about it or we stress them out by saying like no you need to know this and you need to do this uh, that is something i think is where the challenge with assessments for preschoolers come in so one of the things uh, that uh, we normally hear like you know these are babies why do we need to assess the young ones yeah, right. i mean come on what do you are you going to assess whether a child knows a b c d they learn if not now they learn the next year they learn the right. uh, you know a year after that so how does it matter why would we need to assess a child on knowing 1 2 3 or whatever they know it is important but not to assess the abc's and the 1 2 3 but really the assessment shifts in the preschool years and that is something that we need to understand what is the outcome that we're looking at from assessments and i think that's the key element for the success of any preschool assessment whether in the virtual space or in the physical format of schooling so i'm just going to briefly explain to you why assess preschoolers and i think you know uh, we're having a lot right now even where parents think that it's okay not to send children to school that's a discussion right. that yeah. right and uh, you know it's okay to miss that year so what in nursery how does it matter it's okay the child will go to the next year but the preschool program is a structured program which looks into the growth and development of children right right you when you look at the development that happens you're not only looking at cognitive development it's not only the literacy or the numeracy that you're looking at you're looking at all kinds of skills whether it's the physical whether it's the emotional whether it's the socio emotional skills all goods are taken into account and this you know we all know that research states that you know the maximum learning happens at this time which is why structured right. programs have been created a parent also has uh, you know things that they have to do and may not have the complete knowledge of how to do this program in that structured manner that you are able to cover all the elements all the different areas some parents who are really uh, you know i'd say with it with their children can surely do homeschooling and take their children forward from there but right. otherwise preschool program is a very structured program overall across a lot of schools some areas well you always have quality parameters that are not met but the ones that meet the quality parameters ensure all kinds of development are taken into place so uh, you know if you have parents who tell you that it's okay to miss a year you can talk to them about this that it's not okay to do so right. why the school years are so important and if the parent is ready to do it and is able to do it then great if not it is always better to send children into school even if it is in the visual format you know uh, one of the things about uh, the virtual school is that you know we understand it's not fair to preschoolers really not fair to all children across not fair to teachers yeah. any of the stakeholders really but it is better than nothing true there are some elements at least that are covered children are in the pre operational stage you know in their preschool years now they need to touch to do uh, you know and to bring in a lot of uh, activity based stuff that they need to do you know so the sense the sensory right. learning needs to be there but through the virtual program you know schools are explaining to parents how they can go about doing it so it becomes like a three way process the parent the child cool. and the school maybe at some point of time while we were in the physical format the uh, input from a parent would have been lesser this time it's even more so and when i'm talking about assessment yeah. of the virtual format uh, i am going to talk about how parents now also need to play a large role and this is something i think we need to take back when we go back into the physical format yeah so uh, okay. i'm going to come back to assessments and why we need to do assessments for preschoolers so like i spoke about earlier you have your uh, preschool program which is a structured program you're looking at di different uh, areas of development for children 
Now, what you're actually doing is you're not assessing the child. That's a very important thing to remember. Assessment in preschool does not hold the child accountable for results. Normally, you would compare this child got this grade, this child got this grade, and this grade. This really is actually a grade for your program and not for the child. That's the difference with it of assessment in preschool compared to maybe the regular higher K to 12, uh, the grade 1 to 12 that we look at. But that's the marked difference that is there. So you can't hold the child accountable for the results that come in preschool. It's actually the program. So when you assess children in the preschool, you're actually looking at, uh, you know, the growth and development of the child. You're seeing whether it's working, the program is working for the child, and do we need to relook at the program? So if a child, say, hasn't achieved certain levels in, uh, you know, literacy or in reading skills or in, you know, the socio-emotional space, what are the elements that we need to tweak in the program to support the child to grow there? And I think with the new NEP coming in, the National Education Policy, mm. in fact, this will get taken across the grades. You know, True. a lot of good schools and, uh, you know, quality programs have checklists in all these domains nowadays that you're going to be checking, you know, the child right. is able to put two blocks on top of each other or is able to, you know, read three letter words and things like that. So you actually have checklists now. It's no longer like it was like English, math at our times. It used to be just right, like that. Right. none of the now have that. Now you have those, you know, the kind of checklists that are there. But within those checklists also, one thing that we must explain to parents is this is not a checklist for the child. This is a checklist for the program to say, how do we need to tweak the program and how parents can extend themselves to work with their children at home? You know, uh, research has proved uh, one of the things is that it's extremely difficult to assess the cognitive abilities of children before six years because the growth and development is happening at such a fast pace. So right. if you're looking at children, uh, you know, in that age group, sometimes uh, say you have a child in play group, right? The child doesn't speak at all. And we assume the child doesn't know. And then suddenly the child comes into nursery, knows everything the child has done in preschool and uh, in play group and is able to say everything. Now, why does that happen? So how were we able to assess really the cognitive ability of that child? We weren't. So therefore, it becomes very difficult to assess a child. All we can look at is to some extent is the milestone. Has a child achieved that milestone? Can we take this forward? How do we tweak to support the child to achieve their milestone? And even when milestones are concerned, nowadays, it is not any longer appropriate to fix a timeline for achieving a milestone. You can change it. Each child is different and we are saying that they have their unique the range. Sorry? Very important. There's a range in the milestones. Exactly. Mm. You know? So how then do we ensure that you know you are you are allowing for that growth? So even when someone says and you know uh, one of the things that I believe in is you know when we even do the checklist that the child knows and I know you know, standardized tests in a sense or standardized uh, areas are important for us to also know when we are developing a program that, okay, you know, we're looking at children in group spaces, but it's extremely important to look at individual areas. So any program that is developed must allow for individual as well as the group uh, activities to happen and the assessment also has to look at both areas. So I'm going to talk about, of course, the various elements of assessment, uh, you know, in some time. But both these areas need to be looked at. Yeah. So I'm just going to, uh, one of the key takeaways is that 
please, whenever you're assessing a child and whenever you're communicating during a PTM with a parent, uh, do not communicate that your child is not able to do this and your child is not able to do that. Mm. The child, child is not to be held accountable for the results of an assessment. I think that's one of the key things that everyone in preschool especially, I know the higher grades too need to do this. It's going to take us time mm. because, you know, we are a marks oriented uh, country as of country. now. <laughs> country. Yeah, country Amrita. So uh, that's going to take some time. But at least in preschool, we mustn't do that at all. So, you know, it's always about the growth and development of a child. Your child has reached this space and, you know, whether it's emerging. So you have different criteria that come in report cards. And I see that across schools, you know, there are these different criteria. But when we communicate with parents, we have to make the parents understand that it's only about growth and development. So even if your child has not got this, these are a few activities that we can do to kind of get your child up to speed or maybe develop because sometimes parents get so scared no the other child is doing this my child can't do this right uh, you know and they're always are... comparing their kids with other child oh, oh, another thing to remember is it's not a test because oh. otherwise assessment is always mm. intermingled with the word test yes. you know and they're supposed mm. they're taken as synonymous but they are not synonymous not. very know? important to understand that test is just checking assessment yes. is evaluation and when you Correct. evaluate something you look at the pros cons trends challenge areas but when you look at test it's just checking whether the child knows or is able to do now yes tests are important but they are important again for the program say i'm teaching abc to the children mm. or i'm teaching three letter words mm. or i'm teaching and pre-math concepts to the children now, if I don't test, I don't know whether the children know, mm. and I don't know whether I've taught it well. So it's not for the kids, right? But it's for me to know whether I've taught it well, and do I need mm. to redo it? Do I need to do it in another way if the kids have not understood it? That's what the program, the assessment is for. It's not for the children, and that's a key thing to remember where assessments are con concerned. And also, this, if you understand this, your communication to parents completely changes. It's going to take time right. to educate parents also regarding the same. But I think it starts from us as educators that we need to communicate with parents regarding the same. Now, uh, I'm right. going to come down to how do we do assessments. So I'm, I'm now speaking about the physical format first, which is a broad format, which also happens even for, uh, you know, the virtual space. Mm. So you have your formal assessments, which are your standardized, you know, you're checking whether the child is able to write those two letter words, matching, yes. sorting, all those things your child, the child is able to do. So that you're looking at their cognitive abilities in some sense. You know, whether they persist at a task, uh, they're able to do it. So you're looking at all those areas. So there's your formalized, standardized testing to some extent. Taken in the right spirit, it's a good thing to do. Like I said, it's about your program, not about the children. Control them accountable. Uh, then, of course, you have your uh, informal, which is the naturalistic, where you observe them in their settings, in their natural settings. And that uh, is an extremely important part of assessment for young children. And a lot of tools really uh, need to be used while doing this observation. Yeah? So while you're observing the children, one is, of course, you know, we normally end up writing anecdotes is how you kind of uh, understand that, you know, children are able to do what they're doing and you make notes of it, what the child has done. But it's not always easy then to do an analysis when you have so many anecdotes. Cool. It becomes very difficult for teachers. You know, you've got your, let's say, 25 or 26 children in your classroom and for each child, if you, right. you have to observe and then you have to write anecdotes and then if you have to analyze it's not easy so you can always have and we know that there are developmental milestones of children we know there are certain things so it's always good to have a checklist with you while you're doing checklist. your observations so it's not something that you're always writing down and then you make small notes as teachers i know and i know it's not easy 
because if i had to write down so many notes and and in, i mean it is tough it is tough and then i have to see through those notes and find you know what's happening so one of the tricks that i had was or one something that everyone can do while uh, i was teaching was i used to have a book with each child i used to put the child's photograph i used to write their details and then i used to have like five six pages where i regularly i used to like i had a timetable wrote something only five children uh, is who i am going to observe and these are the criteria only that i'm going to observe because when i used to get confused otherwise what am i looking at right and then i would write what i had observed and also it became easier for me also to see through the information when i was finally writing down the report cards or before a ptm because i had fixed my criteria for observation so it's important to do that when you're doing naturalistic observations it is important to fix your criteria okay what you're going to observe then make your notes sometimes you can have those criteria as checklists so then you don't have to make long notes you can just put a tick mark okay the child did this 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 and while the child was playing so say uh, uh, children are sitting in a group together is there sharing happening not happening was the child able to sort the shapes was the child able to persist at the task so all these elements can then be taken on and you can fix your criteria and you know the best way to do this is also to have a timetable i'm going to just observe five or seven children in this week on this criteria it just makes it easier for oneself right you are assessing normally what happens is we do a skill observation when we are coming to the end of the term that's something that sure. of uh, the, you know teachers do and what happens at that time is it becomes so much of a pressure then what happens overload is overload it's right. an overload and the pressure on the teachers is terrible because they have to finish all those 18 children or 25 children in that we can tell me about it it's the worst thing possible so sure. no? so then therefore you start early and if you're doing only four or five children per week it really doesn't matter it's right. easier to do and slot in and then at the end of it you can then consolidate and you then have, are only analyzing later also you see the growth so say in the first month if you analyze the first three criteria do it again in the third month and right. you just be able to say oh there is growth so you know your program is also working so when you're talking to the parent also your ptm is much more meaningful right because you are actually saying i saw this that this time at the beginning of the program and this is what i see right now you know so the child was wasn't able to persist i asked would start walking around the class would not be able to sit and but i am seeing that happen you know later the child is able to do that so in that sense uh, you know it works uh, amrita i could go on and on so please somewhere give me some time uh, management uh, <laughs> okay, don't worry <laughs> no no i think everyone is loving it actually if you could just tell us about what tools and strategies you could use for both the the physical assessment and the virtual assessment then you know we we i think that's what everyone's just waiting for waiting for so i know both that. please please share both we are, we are very interested all right okay so uh what happens is now you've done your observations you analyze your anecdotes so i've given you two broad types that are there now when we come into the virtual format because i see the preschool still being in the virtual format right now it hasn't been easy to teach let me tell you first of all right. because children are uh, a kind of uh, i'd say you know we're expecting to ch sit, uh, children to sit in front of screens one of the things that we did when we were in the physical format was we said no screen minimal mm. screen time and today we are expecting the children to sit in front of the screens and watch us now uh, very difficult for children and then children are not able to sit they aren't so they'll roam around you know they go across and then we say the child is unable to sit the child is not listening to us just leave that that's one of the things i will say is please do not assess children on this at all and i'm going to split it up into and i'm because uh, of the four levels that are there pg nursery junior and senior i'm actually going to uh, separate all the four grades or i might club the uh, pg and nursery and junior senior and give you all tools based on these levels because there's a marked difference in the children uh, in these two slots you know we see it across every year i mean between pg and nursery there's such a massive change we never see it anywhere in our life the kind of change that we see in these four years in school for children because what you see in pg the child is completely different in 
nursery in growth development and then in junior and then in senior so you're it's like scaffolding of course but you're growing and so this spurts which happen no of uh, development which happens yes completely completely so uh, we're expecting them to sit is one thing that we must completely take away uh, even if it is as a part of your skill set you know, where we say that children uh, uh, can stay on task but mm. children to stay on task is also one of the criteria that i see across i've seen across report cards but that's mm. something in this time shouldn't be a part of your assessment at all because as adults it is so difficult for us i i i would tell you that while watching a webinar or something i'd still be checking out social media or messages on my phone aren't you multi True. and it's not multitasking you're multi viewing viewing right and totally agree also, yeah you're consuming content but it's in such a passive manner so for young mm. children while they are watching our classes also it is consuming content in a passive manner unless we make the program a very active program so to re for us to reach an assessment which is which is authentic in the virtual space first our program should be a program which is very active content based yeah so it's active consumption for children and not passive consumption and how to differentiate between active and passive consumption of your program is see what happens is you can't have all the children speaking to you at yeah. you know it be chaos on a virtual it become time. chaotic i'm telling you i honestly say hats off to the teachers like i've gone into the children yeah. of grade 1 and preschool and the children because they saw me and they recognized me wanted all to talk to me and they all unmuted yeah. themselves and they started hi miss the fathers that and all that now when they did that i was like completely taken aback and i said manage this <laughs> how do you understand what the kids are saying you can't do that so yes we need mm. certain rules and regulations but how can we make it active so i i'm sure most of the virtual programs are for an hour would be for yeah. an hour majorly is how we're looking at it so it's important to split that hour up into mini parts like you know you're having say not more than 8 minutes uh is a thing that is uh, you know so because even if you look back at research on how much uh, attention spans are and in the virtual space it's even smaller for children not only children but even adults really but adults so uh, if you look at every activity that you do as a max of 8 minutes and don't take it above that it's the best way to work your program so say you're doing a story you do it within that 8 minutes then you give a break or you do something so you know using tips and tools like you know move your fingers move your hands jump a little bit all that is extremely important in that one hour see we're trying to actually compensate for the timeline in school where the children do so many other things interact with their peers do uh, you know get to touch get feel with taking away from that mm. and wasting attention on the screen it's very tough True. so how do you kind of do that it's an 8 minute slot don't have anything more than 8 minutes in and then give those little 2 minute breaks to do something else to build attention to engage children back again yeah it could also be blink your eyes let's see something green let's do some so all these bits need to happen because if your program is active your assessment will be more authentic because you've actually assessed what the child knows and not what the parent knows because parent. what you <laughs> right assessment is the parent is the one who's doing the assessment rather than the child like i know that sometimes parents are sitting in class and they're saying answer this answer this you know yeah. i've seen that also yeah. and uh, you know like yeah. it's about the child it's not about the parent and it's right. about the children so one of the things also that um, in the virtual space and even like that we should have a, a parent education session on assessment and what is their yeah. role in assessment i think should be done with parents uh, you know it's extremely important for them to know so if we look at it as stakeholders you know so you have uh, the school man leadership who is a stakeholder 
you have yeah. the coordinators you have the teachers you have the children parents are also stakeholders and that parent education on really how what is their role in assessment should come forward and they must understand why assess especially at this time true because especially. right now schools have shifted from the schools to into their houses so i think more so at this time otherwise yeah. also but more so now yeah and somewhere then you have to tell the parent that if you're going to answer for your child we are going to assume your child knows but if your child doesn't right. answer we know we have to work with your child right. you know sometimes you have to do right. this you have to tell them that okay we know we'll have to work with your child so we'll work with your child but if you want to do it you go ahead and do it yeah if you answer for your child right very true because at the school the teacher will be able to find out the core of where the child is stuck why is the child unable to answer why is the child unable to do the task that's something that will come so parent education is a must uh, on why assess and what is their role in assessment at this point they play a very large role and i'm going to speak about the components of that and i think uh, going forward this should also be done as a part you know, in the physical format a lot of learnings that have come while we were in the virtual while we, while we are right now in the virtual format are actually things that i think we should take forward to the physical format and that's how learning will grow so uh coming to virtual assessment again you will have both types you will have your formal assessments which are your standardized testing which you will do for numeracy literacy uh, pre math concepts everything whatever that you're doing with the children as a part of your program your themes everything that you do you will be doing that as that formalized component now there are different ways to do it there are a lot of apps that are available you can have interactive slides where the children can do matching sorting all those things can happen you can also ask parents to take videos of tasks that are given to the children and send them across to you so if you've given a task say you've asked a child uh to bead you know to lace beads mm. based on color patterns mm. you know or you're asking for say uh, the use of scissors to cut something something now you can ask the parent to click a video while the child is doing the task and send it across to you so you're easily able to say go through the video and say okay where does the child right. stand with that because in the virtual space you can you can't observe them like you would normally in school so your Very formalized test can happen through this the worksheets you know what happens is sometimes you upload the worksheets and you say okay it will be get done at home or the parent has to upload scan mm. and upload the worksheet is another thing that's mm. happening nowadays is where workbooks have been given to children and you are told that uh, you know the child has to do the worksheet you scan and upload Well, if a parent has supported, then it's taking away away again from authentic assessment. Correct. Very true. So, how would you know about it? So, it's always better to do, uh, you know, these kind of tasks. So, if you're doing numbers, you can ask the child to count certain things, and the child can send it to you. Uh, the video can be taken by the parent and can be sent to you, so you know the child knows counting of numbers. I love this idea of the video. you know yes uh, there's another thing that's happening out here is the teachers also feeling the connect when she's seeing the child do the task so yes. she knows what she wants to teach is actually translating into something which is being done yeah. you know sure. and the child is learning the only reason we are all over here is because we are so passionate about it no so it's wonderful right. yeah much better than a photograph yes yeah yes. and then it's you can't make out anything yes and also you know uh, and i'm going to talk about one of one on one conferences later but also what happens is you replay it for the children this is motivation for them to do more tasks because mm. when they see themselves on screen my teacher mm. showing me that i did this task so sweet you know mm. okay, i want to do more mom i want to do more i can do this also i want to show my teacher you know that right and you see that a lot getting like, that sense of achievement Yes. Yeah. Hmm. So what happens is the learning kind of gets fast forwarded. So it just kind of goes ahead by leaps and bounds, and this motivates the children. Everyone, let me tell you, everyone likes to see themselves on screen. True. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. I remember I used to always have this mirror, uh, you know, uh, in the preschool, 
uh, in one of the places where I was earlier, and uh, I used to have a mirror. So play group children normally, you know, when they come in, they cry, and when they are going home, they cry. Inside, once they reach into class, they settle down. Even then, mm. but they cry. Mm -hmm. What we do, uh, what we would do is before going home, the children had to look at themselves in the mirror, make their hair straight and everything, smile at themselves, and then go out. They would stop crying. Mm. <laughs> what a nice idea! Really. Good idea. <laughs> when they saw themselves, very good idea. They, How they, do you see? And this is also about developing a skill. Which is how do you present yourself, mm -hmm. right? But and yes. the, uh, the preschool stage is also about the me stage. Yeah, right. all about me. So coming from that, I thought that you know if a mirror is there, I thought maybe the kids will stop crying. Yeah, because they're so they, egocentric at mm -hmm. this age. So, so you're actually playing on that. Really, very lovely. So, yeah. So good idea. Very good idea. Children crying while going out of school was very less because they wanted to see, and then they started tucking. Some of the children would actually like the babies would tuck them. <laughs> so sweet. wipe my nose. So they were also hmm. evolving with that. Is something that we saw. We really liked, uh, you know, this. I I just tried it out. I said, how do we work this? How do we stop them from kind of going home upset because we want them to come back happy to us the next day. So if you're seeing that right. and if you see that, the same uh, actually thing is what you're applying for videos. When a child sees them right. on screen, they are motivated to do more. So you're actually applying that same uh, space and you're using it in the virtual format. Right. So that's one of the things. So you are getting your standardized testing done through different formats for children. Yeah? But you're doing it. Because it is needed, because it tells you whether you are delivering the program well and whether the child is developing in the way they are supposed to be developing. They're taking in the kind of information, their cognitive abilities and their other abilities are developing. So that's one space. The second space that we're looking at is the informing, yeah, which is your naturalistic observation. Now, in a virtual space, let me tell you, it's not possible for teachers to say that I'm going to observe each child and know what they're doing and what's happening. That's very tough. I mean, I know we we keep saying teachers are super women. Right now, at least, I, I completely say hats off to them. But I think it's really, really difficult for them. Very difficult. Also, to understand in a virtual space, in that small screen, is not easy. So one of the things that need to be done in virtual space is every day a time slot should be given for one-on-one -on -one conferences. That's something that we're doing okay. currently. And uh, Swati, I think, is in this group, and she's somebody who recommended this. Uh, so, uh, you know, these are one-on-one -on -one conferences which actually support children. So every day, if a teacher takes individual time, which is 15 minutes with a child, so every day you can take two children. After mm -hmm. It's only a one-hour session nowadays that we have. So you stop at that one-hour session. The teachers still have time. So say 15 okay. minutes to one child and 15 minutes to another child if the teacher puts down that time and like we said earlier like in the physical format when you're observing children you're observing them on certain criteria the mm -hmm. same way the children can give children certain tasks that they're doing and actually observe them live or have conversations with them live these are also areas where you can assess social emotional skills because this is the only time that the kids get to interact on a one on one basis, which doesn't happen in that complete one hour that is there because all children are in that group, they're in their own boxes. It's not like school. So everyone's right. stuck in their own box. So how do you break the barriers of that box, if not with their peers, if that's not possible, but at least with the teacher? That's what you're doing. So this one-on-one -on -one conference is a big tool that you can use for informal assessments and for observation of children. You know, so and sometimes it can also be that you're talking to the parent, the child is playing around. Maybe, you know, and you're supporting the parent to understand what's happening. The second outcome of these one-on-one -on -one conferences is you're supporting a parent on a one-on-one -on -one basis to understand about their child. And to say in smaller bite-sized pieces, not to wait till the PTM, but in smaller bite-sized right. pieces, why don't you try this this week? This is what we observe through the videos that you sent across. These are certain areas that need work on. 
if you do these activities at home this will help because today parents are partners maybe if earlier they had a 20% involvement in whatever was happening in school today it's a 50 to 60 I, i'd say sometimes it even right. more than that and so they are a part of that mm-hmm. assessment process so you are kind of getting them to work with the assessment so these one on one conferences are extremely important and if you look at the number of days within a month you finish at least three fourth of your class so you know by the time mm-hmm. the child comes again for a cycle of your one on one meeting it's been a month and a mm-hmm. half but you have given that that 15 minute of time or 20 minutes of time that you give to each child will make a world of a difference for authentic assessment of the child these are your times for your anecdotes Mm-hmm. when parents will be very happy to be one on one attention at the same correct. time correct it is an yeah. effort i don't deny it but it is worth the while right yeah. yes and i think Definitely parents really it. appreciate the guidance also at this stage yes they yeah. do. they do uh one more thing that should be done is really parent interviews for assessing a child I don't know you know whenever we did our ECCA if you remember we used to do those big journals I'm sure you know whoever was on this you remember we used to make those big journals for children with a hand print foot print right we right all those things and we used to make that get yes. parents to make those journals of those their children <laughs> so what happens is the parent is making the journal and you're interviewing the parents on the milestones yeah the developmental milestones not scaring them by saying oh this your child didn't do so okay this part is where your child stands today and this is where now what we are going to do in the program to ensure that your child can move to the next level so when you create those journals but don't let the parent create it alone by just telling them you'll take it and you'll go yeah. please no mm. what to do this they have their own jobs to do with house mm. not there be very sensitive about the amount of work that you give to parents be very clear in your mm-hmm. heads what you're giving to them and how much you're giving to them and what are the instructions it has to be extremely simple for them but parent journaling and parent interviews will actually help to maintain authentic data it's like maintaining portfolios of children how do we do that right. in we maintain the portfolios of children right if the kids were in school we would have done it but right now we're expecting parents to do it but let's make it interesting for them and simplifying it for them so that when they look back they don't see it mm. as something that this was a report card that i made but really mm. some memories that they are taking forward but it's also right. letting us know about the growth and development of the child so you know doing this bit in the virtual space is important if somebody wants to understand i could go on about this but if somebody wants to understand more on this i can speak about this later that how can you do parent journaling and parent uh, interviews can be in detail uh, i wanted to actually talk about areas of um, assessment really you know what do we assess for children i don't know how many of you all have changed your report cards to include things like the child can use the mm-hmm. keyboard has anyone included it in their report card at this point of time children are able I yes. think it's much required, but and uh, no one has yes. thought of. Maybe some have. I don't know about that. But if you have, great. But mm-hmm. how to use the keyboard really is a point. Yes, Swati, I can see you have. So how to use the keyboard is a part of the assessments. It is important today when we ask children to do any activity, they're doing it on yeah. Sometimes even you know when they're doing matching and sorting, they're following the instructions uh, on the computer. which normally yeah. otherwise gets taught in grade 1 and grade 2 mm. right now we're doing it in preschool and let me tell you we know that children take on very fast i know pg children who know how to go on to that site that they need to go on to they know which button to click how will i get into how will i see my yeah, cartoon yeah. it's a damn smart i think one big heading that we need to work on in today's times is mm. tech skills mm. that's where our assessment should also be sorry repeat what did you say that's where our assessment should also be on tech skills but yeah. not assessing tech skills true because the children are so you know we've always called them the digital natives we say children are the right. digital you know we aren't but they are but today's times have actually proved that they are the digital natives so let's Very assess true. the tech skills mm-hmm. and see what all they know and make a note of it mention it that your child is able to use the keyboard 
very well. Simple activities that can be done. You know, so something that uh, we do in the physical format also is the invented spelling. When we ask children, when, you know, especially junior and senior, the children like those big words when we teach them sight reading. Mm -hmm. So they get those big words. And then when children want the new words, what happens? They are not, uh, you know. They're not like, able to put them together. Yeah. And because they are afraid that we will say that their spellings are wrong, mm -hmm. we don't kind of, they also don't come forward. It's so important to teach children. So what you're teaching them is then what you will assess. Show them how sure. to just open a Word document and to type the spelling that they think is right. Mm. And then to, you know, maybe send it to the teacher. So the parent can take a snapshot of it or just email it to the teacher that this is what the child mm. wants to say and email it to the teacher. Now, what happens mm -hmm. with that invented spelling today? The child may have written a particular invented spelling, so say chocolate. Their favorite words. They have these big words that are their favorite. I remember while doing sight words with children, we used to always go for words that the children enjoy, uh, you know, reading about or like balloon. They love mm -hmm. balloon because the balloon, when you say it, it creates your mouth becomes into that round and they like it. And most of the children can't say it also, but they still say balloon, balloon. They're fascinated by the balloon, but they like to say it. So chocolate is another one. Why? Because they like the taste. They also like the shape of the word. So they remember it because of the shape of the word. Mm -hmm. Now, if you look at this, we never ask children to write those words because we think they are big. But if you want to get children in English to write writing, it's okay for them to write any, any kind of spelling. Mm -hmm. And you have to ask them, what is this word that you have written? And the child will say, I've written chocolate. Oh, very good. Now, slowly, as the child is seeing the word chocolate, he'll get to write, he'll come there. Yeah. But what you have done is, because you're allowing the child to write the invented spelling, you haven't stopped them from trying to use new words. So they'll actually look for new words right. and they'll write new words and they're building their vocabulary through that. Now, one of the assessments that is, is to see the journey of invented spellings. Actually. So you go from, say, uh, you know, when the child first wrote, now these are your anecdotal records. So the child has written chocolate at the beginning of the year in mm. a particular manner. But by the end of junior KG, he's got at least ch CH and late right. OC may not be right, but so you're seeing the variance. And before that, chocolate could be anything. Just a C and an L made, made chocolate. So you are seeing that journey of building words. Mm. One, two, three. So where does this come from this actually comes from the fact that when you're also doing when you're teaching them three letter words and four letter words you know and you're doing diagrams and all this with them what are you doing it's the same thing that you are doing so how do you go about doing that to see that you know they know that is through invented spellings and that's a journey that you must uh, take down in the anecdotes I another thing progression of this trajectory is going to get that child to learn so many more things Yes. along the way, you know, yes. and invoke so much interest and curiosity about words and spellings. I think the journey is not only about learning this chocolate. Yes. It's such an amazing thing that the child is learning. Yes. So beautiful. And something a parent can do so easily at home. Yes. So just imagine putting up, say, uh, newspapers or, or, you know, plain white sheets on your uh, door and then getting the child to write Okay, today my chocolate is this, tomorrow my chocolate is that. And, you know, so you're actually mm. seeing that journey. It's like building a word wall at home also. So that's something uh, that assesses uh, word vocabulary building as well as writing skill building. So it kind of motivates children to write. Another thing that we always assess is names. You know, so uh, normally, you know, you tell children to identify their names and all that. And sometimes when you want them to speak on screen, the teacher will say, mm. yeah. Instead of doing that, you know, you have these sites which are uh, wheel of names, uh, random name, wheel of names .com, random name, where a teacher can fill in all the names and then the wheel will go round. So the children are also excited, they're waiting, and whosoever's name comes, they have to read their name and then that child can talk. So wow. your name can happen through that. So, you know, these are small ways. So, can a child assess his or name? You've made it so interesting for the child, but your getting them to do it in this way. So 
all these things can be done so uh, that is wheelofnames.com is it yeah or random name uh, picker random name picker i'm writing this down on uh, the chat so that everyone gets this yeah. all right another thing is online polling using it for your junior and senior kg and even your nursery is something that you can use it so you ask them a question and you put the online polling and you say put yes or no they would love to do that you understand mm. they are getting to see whether they know yes they can identify sight read yes and no they are able to do that or sometimes you want them to say okay which is your favorite transport so say they are doing saying cars uh you know uh, what do you mm. whether you put car trucks or uh, two wheelers mm -hmm. and the child has to click now the child is trying to read those three things because again sight word recognition they are matching i read this there now i'm trying to match right. to say which one i like so or using online polling also for children is a very interactive way of you know kind of getting them to learn uh another thing that uh, you know i've just made my notes so i'm just kind of uh doing this is another time uh, i think all your your bank is so vast and what you've given us also is so huge <laughs> right now you know if you could even even those two three things if they apply it i think it's going to make such a world of a difference Okay. Right. Applied if it helps. So, uh, another thing is me time. It's important for a parent, and this is actually a part of assessment. You know, because uh, I know till now we've been talking about cognitive, social, emotional, mental, physical growth, but uh, you know we've been also talking about your SQ and your HQ, which is your spiritual quotient as well as your happiness quotient, and for that somewhere. a child needs me time and a child has to be explained about me time and it's actually a part of your assessment because this actually shows that a child uh, you know we talk about curiosity of children or just settling down and daydreaming thinking about their task thinking time calming down all these elements are important for children now this is something that we teach there's a way to assess it also that i will explain but what we need to do is this needs to happen in different ways so a parent has to be explained this again that a me time is very important for a child the same thing the parent has to maybe role model to the child the teacher can talk to the child about it during uh, one on one conference especially the junior and senior the nursery may not understand but for nursery the parent has to role model it currently also time with specific members of the family which is maybe just a 10 minute conversation time mm. so say you know and the parent can put in blocks so it's like mommy time or daddy time or say sometimes you have house help who you call didi or whatever bhaiya just conversation time and the parent can be monitoring it or like grandmother time you know where what is the child conversing about needs to be there now these are the elements that need to come in the parent interview what did the child do during me time you know how, how actually this gives you a proper growth and development plan of an individual child what we are looking at because what is the child doing see sometimes some children work with their hands you know i have given you me time some child will actually pick up books if surrounded by books right yeah if a child uh, some children like to just open up things you give them you know they'll find something to open up and kind of look at or do things now what you're doing is one is of course you're allowing for their natural abilities to be enhanced through that so it's not a report really but it's a development aspect that can be built on which tells you what kind of learner also the child is true true some child might just start creating music some child might start singing and yeah. like that i'll start singing like i'll tell you my daughter used to do it if she was left in a place she'd start singing mm -hmm. and i'd be like why is she singing like you know because yeah. like but she'd sing and her sense of music today is so high so therefore we know that sometimes when children have a good sense of music their logical mathematical thinking is also very high very good correct yeah? so when you are looking at assessment and you are looking at holistic development of the child these are a few elements that you also need to look at not just the abcds and the 1 2 3 that's not the true assessment that happens for a child 
these are the various elements really uh, that bring in assessment for a child. Uh, uh, should I add some more things? Any questions? We should look at questions now. I think we should we'll look at the question and questions, answers. Do think? So project yeah, is how, can how do we assess yeah, virtually? I think that is yeah. already done, Prajakta. Does anyone yeah. else have any questions for Deepa? Please put them in a question answer box only so we can look into it. But I think Deepa, you have made this so comprehensive that I don't think yes. people will have questions because it is, it's been such a, you know, a, a program loaded with, this episode has been loaded with, uh, uh, with goodies. And uh, yes, I can and see so it's like putting my hand into a basket and say, getting, oh my God. Yes. <laughs> so, uh, Reni Panthri says, what about secondary yeah. students? Do you have anything that you can... Well, secondary students, if you're looking at formative or summative assessments, it depends on that. Uh, what are you looking at, uh, Renny? Uh, so there are many tools that can be used for formative assessment. And in fact, a lot of them we have been uh, using. So what we did with the formative assessments is we've shifted the way uh, space into more of a tech-based data. So one of the things that we use is videos. Now. Uh, if you see secondary school children, they all majorly have their mobile phones or have access to cameras on phones of their parents and things like that. So they are then, so say if a concept is given to them, rather than just write it down and send it across, what we're actually asking them to do is to explain the concept, record themselves and send it across. In that, what happens is the child but it's a simple thing, right? You know that, that when we teach somebody something, we learn it more. Or we understand it better because right. we have to explain it to somebody. So it's actually uh, taking concepts into a deeper level and they're understanding it better and that's how they're uh, giving it back. We're asking children to use technology tools, uh, various uh, you know websites and uh, various areas that can be, uh, you know, apps that can be used and to explain their concepts. So they, they've been using Powtoons, uh, you know, uh, to make uh, videos explaining the concepts that they want to explain. So they're enjoying that space. The people are really enjoying it because, and, and they're coming up with new things. Let me tell you, uh, you know, that we flipped the teacher, the teacher. And I always say this, where technology just flipped the teacher. We aren't the teachers, the kids are the teachers. I swear. You know, so the kids- We learn so much more from them instead. <laughs> Yeah, so then the kids are able to kind of come back to us and do these, uh, uh, you know, they show us these amazing things and we're wondering how they did it. Like, you know, they're using tools. Um, right. I haven't heard of, honestly. And if I try to use it, I don't know where. So they use Prezi to do their presentations rather than a typical PPT. You know, they have these presentations that zoom in and zoom out, uh, which is called Prezi. That's what they do. So very interesting things that uh, the kids are coming up with uh, nowadays. Uh, so for the formatives, you can use tool-based assessments. Of course, summative, you have a lot of uh, softwares that are currently available where you do MCQs and you do open book examinations. But I do feel, uh, you know, and this is something that I very strongly believe in, is that we could kind of, and, uh, you know, something that we've done is we've educated parents. We've asked them to be invigilators because we're not only teaching children uh, academics, we're also teaching them values. And ethics is a very important part of assessments. And, uh, you know, somewhere, uh, because we can't be everywhere, we try our level best. Somewhere, if children or parents are unable to support this process, it's harming the children only. And I think something that they need to understand too. Because as educators, this is how far we can go in the virtual space. I know we are breaking, yeah. we're breaking barriers in a lot of spaces, really. I mean, teachers are working, I, our teachers are working with memes, you know, they're coming down to kid level, where they're doing cartoons with children, they're doing memes so that the kids are engaged, they're interacting, there is so, they're doing virtual field trips. So there's so much happening for children in all these elements. Like we, you could also ask a child to take you on a, the whole class on a virtual field trip and that's the assessment. Wonderful. And you could do it's individual. Amazing idea. 
really yeah so uh, all these things really can be worked on and i think uh, you know this is a space that can be explored a lot yeah and uh, someone is requesting if you can share the tools of assessment in the chat box sorry is it possible someone is requesting for sharing the tools of assessment in the chat box for preschoolers okay right. uh, deepa otherwise you can send them to us and we'll put it on our thought leaders page and Fine. people can go there and get the, get it over there that yeah. i'll do that yeah. i'll uh, send it across on a sheet to you because by the time we type out here another thing is also yeah, that's lovely so if you get something called radio lab uh for youngsters and even for primary children that's okay. something that can be used uh, something called radio lab which is for listening skills so they say the stories wow. and their scent is also very good uh, you know octomom and all that uh, and then children can be asked comprehension questions on the same so uh, it's a very good tool to use yeah so that's another one nice wonderful thank you so much deepa wonderful ideas from you and i'm sure there's been so many takeaways personal best which i like for the virtual class for the actual classroom is making your own notes every child gets pages of uh, information that you can note down your me time idea i like very much and the second idea of is recording the videos and from the parent side and of course the mirror i'm never going to forget that mirror idea it <laughs> can go the mirror stuck in everyone's face now <laughs> yes there's been a lot of takeaway and i'm so glad that you could be on our show and i would really thank you from the bottom of my heart deepa thanks for being over here thank you so much uh, bela and amrita it's been a pleasure to be here and uh, i've enjoyed myself sharing all these ideas and i hope you thanks can. deepa you thank have you so shared much. so generously you know there's a word i can yes. use it is generous over here because you've given so much and if you see the chat section and you can see how many people have thanked you for all the good ideas so it's really something which we'll i think blessed forever uh, thank <laughs> everybody here thank super you. Thank, thank you so much thank you thank you Lovely. so much okay. let thank me just announce for the next week's uh, speaker on 9 december wednesday at 4 pm we have harsha ramaiya with us she is the founder director of small wonders and also the national core committee member of eca and her topic is we define play to enhance development in children so stay tuned for more next wednesday see all of you there and please do like our facebook page and please join our thought leaders group and share your ideas over there as well thank you everyone until next yes, wednesday bye bye we are looking at we are looking at all of you sharing with us on the thought leaders page so please join us over there bye 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 thank you bye bye amrita see you Bye everyone. Bye everyone.